What's up, Mario Karters and Frenzy fans? It's the last day of the ranked Waluigi Cup in the Yoshi Tour. And uh, it's been a busy week. I haven't been able to play a whole lot. Um, there's only one course that I've really played. And um, it's been okay. I've been... Uh, I played the one course and I've been kind of waiting to see what the all my opponents are doing to see what I need to do here on the last day. So we're going to go through and use the calculator a little bit and show a run or two and then talk about uh, tanking versus uh, winning by a lot strategy and uh, what we're seeing so far. So... If you remember from our previous episode, we were taking a look at taking a look at the Waluigi pinball, and the debate was: so I had taken my Koopa King to level six and double points uncapped, and also got the Dry Bowser Umbrella to level six because at level six it unlocks in the Waluigi pinball. Uh, T course and also double uncapped. So the, the debate was what well, we were going to do <coughs> excuse me what we were going to do with uh, Koopa Claus and Bowser Santa. Um, let's see here. Originally at the very beginning of the week it looked like the first place score was 67,670. So if we come back here, based on the current loadout that I had at the beginning of the week, it looked like I was going to be able to get about 67,600. So I was right on pace, but I knew that people were going to be playing, and I usually anticipate about a 10% improvement from that first or second day. So. I guess I was kind of gauging about 6,000 more points than the 67,000. So I'm needing to invest some tickets to try and get around 73,000. So let's take a look at Waluigi Pinball, and we're wanting to do something with Koopa Claws. Um, if we take a look at our current loadout, this gets us at 34,522. So let's see what happens when we play around with leveling him up or changing his base points. Um, at this point, I think I had like 19 high-end driver uncap tickets and mm, maybe six or seven level up tickets. So the points base tickets, there were a lot more of them, so I was more willing to spend them. Um, but using the calculator, we can take a look and see uh, which tickets will give us this extra 3,000 points that we're looking for. So, if we were to level him up from level 4 to level 5, that gets us 36,236 based on the 175 action run at 62 uh, bonus points per action, which is a run that I've had previously. It was a really good run, um, and I was anticipating being able to uh, duplicate that that amount of actions with that bonus points per action. So at level 5, I only get 1,700 more points, as you can see here. If we were to take him to level 6, which would be 5 tickets, which would be a lot of high-end tickets, that gets me to the, the extra 3,000 points that I need, which is great. But that's kind of expensive on those high-end driver tickets. So what's interesting is if you put this back down to level 5 and if you move the base points up from 980 to 1190, that also gets you up to about the same as what a level 6 single uncapped driver would get you. So level 5 double uncapped is very similar to level 6 single uncapped getting that extra 3,000 points that I'm needing. So I 
went ahead with this. I double uncapped, uh, let's see here. Yeah. So we raised his base points up from 980, as you can see here, and took him up from level four to level five. And what that does is that gets us that extra 3,000 uh, or so points to get us in the 71, 72, 73,000 range. So we'll go ahead and take a look at the run that I did. So I started out in first place and I believe I had played it enough time so that the, all the bots were badgeless. Um, if you play a course over and over and over, you'll notice that when you get the um, opposing bots, they, they'll they have a lot of badges, but after you play a long time, the badges go away, which makes them easier, essentially. Started out with a coin frenzy, which was great. Kept combo through here. Keeping combo. Then a coin box frenzy. Now this is one of the hardest places to keep combos. I found that if you go a hard right around all of those pinballs and stuff, it's easiest to keep combo. So I had 112, 113 actions on the first uh, the first lap of the course, which was good. And I'm just wanting to stay ahead of everyone, hoping for some coin boxes, maybe another frenzy getting green shells and coins. And a coin box, which is good. Pick up some extra actions. Not a whole lot of coins, unfortunately. At this point, I'm seeing that this is pretty much the run. <laughs> of course, I get snagged by a pinball. I used my item ticket, hoping to keep combo. Didn't do it in time. But, crossing the line with 24,600. Got 40,700 points, which was great. We got 188 actions, 176 combo to start out with, then the pinball hit me, and got 12 more actions after that. So it was a pretty good run. Um, played it a few times since and wasn't able to get uh, anything more, so we'll put in, what was it, 40,700 and... Was it 80? Oh, 42. So based on that run, I got 3,000 more points than the extra 3,000 that I was thinking I was going to get by just leveling stuff up. So I'm really 6,000 ahead. Um, which is good. Um, okay, yeah, so let's go ahead and do this. If we were to come over here and assume that I get the 14,704 for the first track and the second track, assume that I get the 18,382 and then come back over here. So then that puts me at 73,000 828, or about 74,000 for the actual score. Um, but, so here's the thing, is there's this debate 
um, that I kind of have, and we're, I'm talking about it with some people on Reddit and kind of seeing, I'm eavesdropping on some other conversations to find out what's happening when, when people uh, tank on purpose, so either get 6th place to go down a tier or 20th place to go down two tiers, or um, if they win first place by a lot of points, how does each of these scenarios uh, influence what the future ranked cups uh, are going to be like, what, what the, the competition is like. So the thing is, I don't know that I want to score too many points, and I need to, um, so that's been part of the reason why I haven't uh, played a whole lot. Uh, at least these other two. I haven't played the Donut Plains or the Sunset Wilds yet. Going back to here, though, on the last uh, video, we had started to talk about the, the strategies between tanking on purpose and then uh, versus getting a lot of points and winning by a lot. So this uh, fellow, uh, Raxinator, I started talking with him on Reddit and a couple weeks ago, okay, so last tour, he had purposely gotten 20th place for both cups. So he ranked down four in order to be able to uh, do well uh, in the Yoshi tour. So when I saw that he had done that on purpose, I reached out to him and I was like, uh, you know, it's going to be interesting to see what your, your next um, opponents are like. And... Sure enough, after he had tanked two courses, or sorry, two tiers for uh, the two ranked cups within the tour, the Yoshi Cup, so last week's cup in the Yoshi Tour, he had super, super easy comp uh, opponents. And I think this was pretty much, it says up there one day left, but this was pretty much the same scores as um, what he had like one of the first couple days. So he ended up getting first by 18,000 points. We've been in touch uh, during the, the Waluigi tour, because I was thinking like, oh man, he won by so many points, 17,000 points. I wonder if even though he had tanked a lot in the previous tour, would he still have an easy matchup or would he be matched up against some harder people since he had gotten so many points? So he sent me some screenshots. This is this current week, so the Waluigi tour, or sorry, the Waluigi Cup. He's got, I think, a little bit difficult loadout matchup. Um, I'm not sure which of the courses it might be, the Donut Plains. Um, he just doesn't have the stuff to be able to really get very many more points, um, and this first place guy that's in his ranked does. Um, so it looks like this guy's actually, you know, he's got 65,000, so he was 4,000 points three days left, and then two days left he was at 70,000, so he was winning by about 8,000 points. And so, unfortunately, I think that Raxinator having won by 17,000 points, Nintendo's algorithm saw that he was his score uh, versus the competition that he had in the previous tour was too much, and so matched him up with someone that they thought was going to push him more. Now, had he pulled for some items and pipes, and you just level up tickets, you know, he may have been able to do it, but since it was a cart week, cart ticket week, um, I'm just not sure that he, that was something he wanted to do. Uh, interestingly enough, there was another uh, post on Reddit where someone was talking about this week's ranked and asked, you know, are you playing hard? Are you tanking? Like, what's going on? So there was a little conversation going back and forth, and I've blacked out the names of these people. Um, I didn't reach out to ask them their permission, so I didn't engage in the conversation either. So this is really more um, me just kind of observing and um, just kind of reporting what I'm seeing in this video. Um, 
so I hope it doesn't rub anyone the wrong way. All we're doing is just trying to take a look at uh, a little bit larger sample size to see how people's ranked is from week to week tanking versus winning by a lot. So uh, the guy at the top here, he says, my theory was if I try hard when I don't need to, I'll either get impossible matchups or really easy ones like the whales do. He says, results so far inconclusive, unfortunately. Um, then later said, sometime last year, I thought tanking might only work uh, if you do it several times in a row. So I aimed for 20th twice in a row, but ended up with someone scoring 90,000 in my group back when I could only get 70,000. Sure, the rest of the group was easier, but what the heck, I was tanking. <laughs> so with this guy, he's kind of the opposite of what we're seeing with Raxinator where tanking twice gave him tanking, you know, getting the 20th place two times in a row gave him extremely easy competitors. Um, but with this guy, he had tanked twice in a row and got someone that had scored 90,000 points. So really, I mean, I don't know if there's any, you know, solid conclusion to take from any of this. I know the sample size is insanely small. Um, one thing I wanted to go over, this is just my history of uh, my ranked placing, just a summary. I'm um, going all the way back to the anniversary tour when I was tier 42. Um, I was really trying to win by minimal points possible, getting first place. A, thinking that I didn't want to win by too much to get uh, competitors that were that had higher and better loadouts than myself, and B, um, if I wanted to get first place, I'm kind of under the impression that if I'm in someone else's ranked, and I only need, you know, 65,000 points, they're in first place with 66,000 points, I don't feel it necessary to try and get 70 or 75,000 points to get first place by several thousand and thus have the other person that I'm in there ranked get second place. So I try as hard as I can to just get first place by only the amount possible that I need. So you see here, I got first by 30 points, then 45 points, then 127 points. Um, sometimes it's a little harder to... Uh, get the just that right perfect score um especially if you know, i'm needing to stretch a little bit and i get a really good run i'm not gonna close the app down off of a double coin frenzy <laughs> and get an extra couple of thousand so anyway you can see here i think the first one two three four five six seven eight nine ten races or tours i had gone up a tier then the Rosalina Tour, I got 6th place, I said it, I needed a tier down, matching was getting ridiculous. Then the next 3 tours I was able to get 1st place easily. And the Berlin Tour, that was a city track where I wasn't going to pull for anything because all of the new items had city tracks in their, in their loadouts and I don't think that that's a very wise choice. Uh, the Cat Tour. I just wasn't impressed with at all, so I got 20th place there. I just wasn't willing to, to pull and put tickets on stuff that I wasn't interested in. Um, then got first place for the next one, two, three, four, five. Then the Mario Tour was really bad. Okay, so here's the thing, is in the Snow Tour, I got first by almost 4,000 points the first week, and then over 2,000 points the second week. And then I felt like the Mario Tour, I was getting matched up with people that had way better loadouts and were pulling and got to the point where I could see early on that in that Birdo Cup, there was no way I was going to be able to get, uh, you know, even anywhere close to 6th. Um, so I just took the 20th. And since then... Um, last week's Yoshi Tour, you'll remember if you saw last week's episode, I had a level 6 Yoshi, but ended up playing a level 1 SNES Mario with not even full 800 base points, uh, 
and one by that 685 points. And so then that brings us to where I'm at this week. So today, a couple hours ago, with 12, 12 hours left in uh, this week's Ranked Cup, I'm sitting at 60,800. Haven't even played the first two races at all except for a coin break run when it was uh, coins of plenty one day. So right now I only need 12,000 more points in order to get first between these two races that I should be able to get about 15 or 16,000 more points. So, I don't know. I guess everyone can play ranked how they want. Let me know what you guys think as far as what's worked for you, as far as tanking, as far as, you know, winning by as many points as possible. Even if you win by a large margin, do you find that you get still easy matchups later? Do you always pull for the new characters or do you save your rubies for just the stuff that you want? Um, I don't know. I think there's there's a lot of variables that go into it and you really just kind of have to see what feels good, what you think you can do. And um, if there's something that you're excited about investing tickets in or pulling on, then I say go for it. Do the best you can. If that week or that tour just isn't doing it for you, I don't think there's anything wrong with just kind of taking a breather, taking 6th or 20th. But let me know what you think um, down in the comments. Make sure to uh, like and subscribe and do the notification bell. So whenever we post a new a new video, you'll be able to, to uh, see when these, these new ones come out. So hopefully everyone's doing well in rank this week and you're placing where you're hoping to get to. And let us know how you're doing with the calculator too. If you have questions about how to use the calculator, how to download it, uh, reach out to us either through the comments uh, on this YouTube video um, or on Reddit. Uh, my screen name is uh, Considerate Snoozer on Reddit, so you can search for me there, um, and I'd be happy to chat about strategy and how to use the calculator and, and all that good stuff. So, good luck for the rest of the day, and we're looking forward to the new Ninja Tour tomorrow. I'm really hoping that. A, we get a coin box player, and B, I know there's supposed to be a new player, like a new character, and we're not exactly sure who it is, but I would be absolutely thrilled if it was Samurai Mario. I know Samurais and Ninjas are different, but they're both kind of cool warrior type people in, in Asia, so keep all my fingers crossed. Hopefully uh, it's going to be a fun tour. It's the last of the three tours of the half birthday of Mario Kart, the one and a half year anniversary. So it'll be interesting to see. Uh, we will talk to you guys soon and may the frenzies be forever in your favor.